Hey y'all, Wacky Wormer here with episode 6 of my Hermit Pack playthrough. Last episode you saw where we got our mechanism set up here for our ore tripling done. And you can see in this chest that I've been putting that to very good use. In between episodes I've run these mechanism logistical pipes upstairs to the surface to a chest. And that chest is surrounded by a 9x9 farm. And that's allowed me to harvest, toss everything in the chest, and it automatically get funneled down here without having to come down here myself. So it's mostly just a convenience thing. But we will use that as part of the automated power production process that we're going to be setting up in this episode. And we're going to do that with items from two different mods. The first mod is Cyclic, and we're going to take a look at this Harvester here. The Harvester is a moderately expensive recipe until you consider that Emerald and Diamond Ores are spawning in the Nether at what I would call an uncommon rate. There's you know it's not everywhere but there's a good bit of it so it's it's not hard to get your hands on a handful of each of these just from the nether so it's really not too expensive of a recipe and that has its upsides and downsides so one of the benefits of this machine is that it's going to harvest in a nine by nine area here and that's a pretty decent sized area it's not really comparable to a late game ender io farming machine or anything like that but for this early game period, it's, it's considerable. The second major, major benefit to this thing is that it does not use energy. All it takes is a redstone signal to turn it on, and it runs. And that's pretty awesome. Now, the downsides to this machine are that it is a very slow harvester. I don't think it's going to be a choke point. I think it's going to harvest at least as fast as all these crops are going to grow. But that kind of remains to be seen. And even if it is pretty slow, I can always add them on any of these other sides here to double, triple, or quadruple our harvesting speed. So that's not so bad. The other major downside to this machine is unlike Ender.io's farming machine, it does not pick up the items that it harvests. It's just going to leave them on the ground there. And I can give you a short little demonstration of that. You'll see that whenever it harvests something like that, it's going to leave the items on the ground and you see the white particle effects there is our Batania flower called a hopper hawk picking up those items and then pushing those into the chest now this hopper hawk requires a little bit of a process to get we have to do power generation and everything in Batania in order to work up to this level and that's what this episode today is going to be about so Batania if you don't know is sort of a magitech mod it's kind of a tech mod that's branded as a magic mod and I say that because there's power generation, power transfer, power consuming machines. You don't really call them machines because they're generally flowers or something else but it it kind of functions as a tech mod with the appearance of a magic mod. To get started in Batania the first thing you want to do is to go exploring and pick up all of these mystical flowers that you can find out in the wild and you can identify a botania flower because it gives off these little particle effects here and the colors do matter so you want to pick up every flower that you can find even if you have a ton of flowers that you know you're never going to use you can always use those to make fertilizer to spawn new flowers so uh, you know definitely pick up all of those you can find once you have those you're going to want to make a petal apothecary that's this machine or a block over here in front of me it's made out of cobblestone, cobblestone slabs, and petals. And this is the machine, tool, whatever that is going to produce flowers for you. So once you've got this built, you're going to put a bucket of water in there. And then the first flower you're going to want to make is a pure daisy. So if we take a look at the pure daisy, this recipe is done in the petal apothecary. It requires four mystical white petals. And then for anything in the Petal Apothecary, you finish off the recipe by tossing in some seeds after that's done. Once you do that, it's going to spit out this flower for you. And this flower in a 3x3 three three area around it, not including itself, is going to convert oak wood and smooth stone into living wood and living rock. And these are sort of the magical upgrades of those items, and they're used in several Batania recipes. So once you've stocked up on a good bit of the living wood and the living stone, or the living rock, you're going to want to make several items. The first thing you want to make is a wand of the forest. So this is three sticks crafted from the living wood blocks along with two petals of any color. And you can see the colors are actually represented 
in the final item that you produce. And this is sort of the wrench that helps you configure different things from Batanium. The second thing you want to make is a mana pool. And that's simply done with the living rock here in a boat-like shape to craft a mana pool. This is the battery that holds mana for Batania, where mana is the energy. Mana is sort of equivalent to RF for Batania. Uh, so that's kind of your battery, your capacitor, what have you, uh, your energy cell, um, however you want to call it for Batania. The last thing you want to make, at least for the moment, is a mana spreader. And this is sort of like conduits for Batania. It's going to wirelessly spread your mana around. So now that we have our mana pool, which is our mana storage, we have our mana spreader, which is our mana conduits used to move it around. The last thing we'll need is mana generation. And I'm doing that with these two flowers here. There's several options. I kind of like these the best. These are called endo flames. Pretty simple recipe. Two brown petals, a red and a light gray. Remember to throw your seeds in on top of that. That gets you an end of flame. And this is almost an exact equivalent to the heat generator from Mechanism. It's just going to take furnace fuels in the form of coal, wood, what have you, and burn those up and convert them into mana. So you can see if I toss that onto there, it actually zapped over to this flower over here. But you get a little burning animation and it's providing mana to this guy here. And we actually see, because I've already linked these two up, this is going to shoot over here. The linking process for this is done by shift right clicking first on the mana spreader and then on the mana pool. And that says mana spreader put out all of your mana into this object over here. Now our flowers here also need to be linked to the mana spreader. You can see on the right side of that center uh, heads up display thing we have the check mark over there saying that it is talking to a mana spreader and sending its energy over there and you can do that by shift right clicking that and then shift right clicking the mana spreader so that's our power generation setup now don't forget our whole intention with this is to make the hopper hawk flower so let's take a look at the recipe for that the hopper hawk flower in the petal apothecary requires two mystical gray petals two mystical light gray petals a redstone root and a rune of air now the petals they're simple to get the redstone root is actually pretty simple just grass which remember vanilla you can harvest it with shears and redstone this rune of air is a little bit more complicated so if we take a look at the recipe for that we can see we're going to need this runic altar and some other items first let's get this runic altar made so we take a look at the recipe for it five living rock with a mana pearl or a mana diamond. Now a mana pearl or a mana diamond are made simply by coming over here to your mana pool with either a diamond or an ender pearl in hand and right clicking if you see that green check mark in the middle. What that means is that you have enough mana to do this conversion process. So once you get that done and you've got your runic altar created, let's take a look back here at our hopper hawk flower. To craft the rune of air, we're going to need mana powder, which is just gunpowder into that mana pool, mana steel, which is iron ingots into the mana pool, a carpet, feather, and a string. And then once you get all of those things in there, you're going to have to reconfigure your mana spreader here to output to this machine here because it's going to require mana to do this conversion process. So we're going to have to rearrange it so that it's shooting out over here. So once this thing fills up with mana, and you'll have a little icon in the center of your screen that's showing how much mana it's taking in. Just like in the Petal Apothecary where we toss in our seeds to finalize the process, here we're going to toss in a piece of living rock to etch the rune on. And then once that's done, it's going to spit out that rune for you. And we have the rune of air. Now if we look at our Hopper Hot recipe, we have the rune of air, redstone root, and our four petals that are tossed into the petal apothecary. Remember to throw your seeds in afterwards and that gets you your hopper hawk. The hopper hawk does not require any energy. 
it will take in mana to expand its radius. Its default radius is a six by six, and that's gonna work perfectly well for us without having to extend it by adding or providing mana to it. Also remember that when you plant this thing, you want it to be beside an inventory because it's gonna push those items into an adjacent inventory, which we already have set up here with a mechanism logistical pipe network that's gonna pull those items down and go into that crusher downstairs. So that's the full automated power production setup. This is going to work pretty well for us for a while. We're definitely going to outgrow it at some point, but hopefully not anytime soon. So that's going to be it for this episode. If you have any comments on mods or items you want me to explore in future episodes, if you have comments on my gameplay, things I've skipped, things you think I could have done easier, uh, if I haven't explained things well enough for you, please leave all that in the comment section below. Give me a thumbs up if you like the video, subscribe if you want to see more content, and I will see y'all in the next episode.